have gotten too used to this being closed up and locked up. We're so afraid we can't come out. Amen. So we're hiding. Now I get it, what happens is a lot of the stuff, it took place out of necessity. But as the weeks have worn on, new habits have formed and they're being formed. We, we become aware of more needs in our own homes. I'll tell you this. My wife will tell you, and uh, I'm sure some of you, uh, there's been more home, house repairs done in our house this year than any here before. <laughs> We've recognized that there are some unanswered questions. There are, some, there are broken places, and there are some intense areas of frustration that we've just been able to just kind of, you know, we just hope maybe some of those things will just kind of go away by themselves. But now because we're held in place, we now have to face those things. We've seen that some aspects of how we operate do not actually work very well and that there are some dependencies which we need to get rid of. In other words, we have realized that we are not living the abundant life that God intended us to experience as believers in Christ. Isn't that what he said in John 10 and 10? He says, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. And there are many Christians today who have been shut up. And there are many who have suffered loss. I, I spoke to someone the other day who they lost pretty much everything. Except they're, they seem to be doing okay, but they're not. They were in the restaurant business in Michigan. For the moment, someone would say, I guess all good things must come to an end. But I have to tell you, if I were to continue on and told you the story, here's what their attitude has been. And not everybody's got this attitude. Well, we started out with nothing. I guess we'll start again. There are others, they don't have that kind of hope. They don't have that kind of confidence. They don't have that kind of vision. But if we're honest, we look around and there are those moments of despair, those moments of loss, those moments of confusion that set in. And we have to confess that we wondered, is this Christian life even worth it? I mean, certainly this season, the season of, uh, of being locked down, the season of being shut in, has given us a lot of time to think about what is effective, what works, and what isn't working. But while we may not be able to predict the future, Turn me to Galatians chapter 6, if you would. Galatians in the 6th chapter. We may not be able to predict the future. The scriptures have some things to tell us. Galatians chapter 6, beginning in verse 6. Are you there? Yep. Amen. Amen. Galatians 6 and 6. Listen to what the word says. Let him who is taught the word share it in all good things with him who teaches. Verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows in his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows of the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary with doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to who? Oh. Especially to those who are the household of faith. Why Jesus? Why the church? We look at this as whatever a man sows, this he also will reap. Now, I don't want you to walk away this morning, or even at the moment since I've heard this before. And this, I, just because you feel like you've heard it, or, or maybe some of us have this idea. Well, you know, I've been planting, but haven't really seen much harvest. Or maybe you feel like you're not planting or harvesting anything during this time of lockdown, understanding that you reap what you sow more 
than, than you sow. Wait, hold on. Did you know some of us, we might reap more than we sow? I'm saying that because here's the thing. Some people think they have so much to offer, but they have very little. And some of us have a lot to offer, but we get very little. So which category would you fit in? The idea of giving, and we're not just talking about monetarily or anything, but we're talking about relationally. We're talking about how it is that we, we learn how to, to relate one to another and, and, and also how we, we, we know how this balance works in, inside the fabric of the church. Many of us, we like to say, well, this is my church. Well, it's our church. Or, wait a minute, it's his church. Now, when we say that, what do we really mean by it? Well, it's his church, so it's all up to him to get all the work done. Wait, no. No, that's not the pastor does. The pastor does that. No. Each and every one of us, we have a work to do. We have a place. We have a part to play in all of this. And some of us, we're, gonna, we're looking right now, we're wondering, you know, maybe, maybe you've not been doing what you're supposed to have been doing as part of being a part of the body of Christ. You know, we have body parts in our, in our body naturally that they really don't know what they do. And sometimes you hear that people get rid of like an appendix or tonsils and, well, you really didn't need those anyway. Then why are they there? <laughs> or sometimes we have we have hair growing in places and I don't need any covering there. <laughs> I met someone the other day, you know, and he was he, he was talking about the, his beard and I, you know, he, he had to shave it. I said, then don't. I said, because you need to cover that thing up. Let that sink in for a minute. <laughs> it did take him a minute. My point is, is we get to a place where we have to start understanding what is important, what is not. And get this, everyone has something to offer. If you are born again, you even have more to offer. Why? Because you, you've been given more. Everyone's been offered the same. They've been offered, but are you ready for this? They've been offered salvation through the sacrifice of Christ. They've been offered what he says. I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Everybody has been offered the same thing. Now, that life may not look the same, but it's still something that has been offered to you. But it's not a life that you just have for yourself. It's a life that keeps on giving. Amen? You know, understanding that you reap what you sow, more than you sow, and later than you sow, is especially crucial during times when we feel like we're not accomplishing any things. And some of us, we've been dealing with that. I'll just tell you, I've been. Because I, I, I don't have the liberty to do the things I should think I should be able to do. But then again, that's why we have a body. Somebody say amen. Yeah. You know, we have this problem because at this moment in history, you are sowing more than you realize in the spirit. Some of us are. How many of you would say, can honestly say, don't put your hand up unless you, unless you have to, maybe you have to think about it and you can answer later. That you've been in the word, you've prayed more this year than maybe your whole life. I mean, here's the thing. You're, you're allowing yourself, allowing yourself, you were forced into it. <laughs> you're allowing yourself more time uh, to reflect on what you've read. You're allowing your, yourself more, uh, the, the word to more affect what you, what's happening in your life and, and you're really understanding more than usual. New patterns are forming. New habits are beginning to take place. And so this is a time to be active in choosing what influences you. Galatians 6 and 8 says, For the one who sows in his flesh will from his flesh reap re corruption. But the one who sows in the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. Now you ask any farmer, any farmer, if you ask a farmer, say, listen, uh, if I plant carrots, can I get beans? <laughs> if I plant tomatoes, can I get apple trees? I mean, what? Right now, we may be more influenced by fleshly understanding than ever before. Someone asked me the other day, hey, did you see this on the news? Did you see this on, on social media? Did you see this? I said, nope. 